Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Age Better, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. Our guest today is Joan Price, who is not only an award-winning writer and sex educator, but also a passionate advocate for embracing sexuality at every stage of life. After a late-life marriage and the loss of her husband, Joan turned her personal journey into a crusade to empower others, especially those over 50, to always see themselves as sexual beings. Her books like Naked at Our Age and Sex After Grief, which is her newest one, offer candid insights into sex in midlife. Her blog, running since 2005, is a treasure trove of sex news, views, and even sex toy reviews, which is what we're going to kind of be discussing today. At age 80, Joan continues to inspire and educate with her unabashed discussions about what she calls senior sex. (laughs) Okay, I like to call it just like sex after, you know, as you get older. (laughs) But the reason I invited Joan onto the show is that she wrote a terrific article about the best sex toys for women in midlife for a very special issue of Cosmo. Yep, Cosmopolitan Magazine. And it's called Sex After 60. And I reached out to Cosmo to connect me to Joan right away. As soon as I saw this issue, I said, I've got to meet this Joan Price woman. I've been following her for years, but I never met her. So if you're a woman who loves her toys or wants to know about some you may have missed, or if you are sex toy curious, this episode is definitely for you. And it's fun. So grab your favorite drink, plop into a comfy chair, pop in your earbuds, and enjoy this conversation. Stay tuned. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Age Better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. and welcome back. Today, my guests, um, we're already having too much fun. We already were just chatting and laughing too much before recording, and here we are. Is Joan Price. She is a sex expert and a best-selling author, and today we're going to be talking about a lot of really fun things, and really, in my mind, being a woman who is over 60, a very important thing. And that's, you know, we're going to be talking about sex and however you define it. So welcome to Age Better, Joan. Thank you, Barbara. I think we've been laughing just enough. (laughs) Just enough. Perfect (laughs) amount. So, okay, Joan, the reason I invited you on the show, in fact, you've been on my list anyway, but then just like, I don't know, two weeks ago or something recently, Cosmopolitan Magazine. You remember Mm -hmm. that? The one that we all used to read in our younger days to kind of learn how to have good sex. Anyway, they came out with a great issue. Wonderful, wonderful issue. Hats off, kudos to Cosmo called Sex After 60. And you are one of the great writers who wrote a terrific Uh article for this issue. And you specifically focus on the best sex toys for women over 60. So why That's what I did. Why do you why <laughs> did you write that and why do you focus on well, sex in general but also sex toys for women who are older? Well, first of all, Cosmo decided to do a digital issue which came out January 9th and I know you can still find it online. Oh, excuse me, there will be a link to the entire issue, of course, in the show notes. So everyone, when you're done listening to this fun conversation, definitely read it. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Super. They were doing a whole issue on sex after 60 for women. And I applaud them because the the people who are now 60 probably were reading Cosmo as young (laughs) women. We were. (laughs) <laughs> and then abandoned it when it, it seemed obvious it was just for younger women. And we did. And they were doing something really spectacular, which is an older women issue. I applaud Cosmo for doing a whole issue on women over 60, women 60, 70, yeah, 80, and I hope. Yeah, because definitely. I'm 80. And God I, bless. I know. (laughs) And I am known not only for writing about older age sexuality, but specifically for writing about sex toys enhance 
our pleasure, our arousal, and our ability to get over that hump and actually reach orgasm. You know, there were so many different terms I looked up, like, what are some other terms for sex toys, right? <laughs> and they're like, pleasure enhancers. There were a lot of other terms used. But anyway, we'll stick to sex toys because it's it kind of rolls off the tongue very easily. But I mean, I think a lot of the audience probably are already familiar with maybe just a simple vibrator, if not anything beyond that. But what about those people who are right now listening in who are sex toy curious? What do you say Good. to them? Oh, well, I actually have a whole blog post about that. Sex toys, especially for first timers. And I can provide you with that link, Barbara. Absolutely. It'll be in the show notes. I would say to them, welcome. Sex toys are more than toys. They're tools. They're tools whose function has absolutely one goal and one ability, and that is to help arouse us and get us to orgasm. They do that on a physiological basis because so many of our sexual challenges are physiological. They don't put you in the mood, well, unless you're in love with one of your sex toys, I kind of am sometimes, but they will enhance the sex you're already having and make things go faster because one of the problems is slow arousal. And another problem is that we don't have that blood flow to the genitals that we used to when our sex interest was hormone driven. Now it is driven by many other things, the need for pleasure, intimacy, a good night's sleep, joy, <laughs> just to feel better. And to keep your vagina healthy, actually. Well, that's right. Not just our vagina, mm -hmm. but our, uh, our whole sexual configuration there. Mm -hmm. Because most of us reach orgasm through the clitoris rather than through the vagina, though many like a both, like stimulation of both. And there's no one way to reach orgasm. It's very individual. And that's why in the Cosmo article, I recommended a range of toys that I hope that whatever your current need, that one of these or maybe two or maybe 10 of these will fit what you're looking for. Yeah, you really did cover a wide range and uh, we will get to those in a minute because that is really what I wanted to have the audience hear more about. But I've heard from so many women because I, I do focus on health and wellness a great deal for people over 50, for people who are going through menopause, coming out of menopause. And like, you know, clearly we are today talking about the post-menopausal women for the most part and beyond. But for those women who have are going through menopause, have gone through menopause, there are, as you pointed out, a lot of physical changes taking place because of menopause, the drops in estrogen, including That's vaginal right. dryness, which can make sex yes. very uncomfortable. I covered that quite a bit with your colleague who was on the show last week. Janet Sirotto, talking mm -hmm. about some other aspects of sex. And again, based on an article she wrote for the Cosmo issue, was really, really good. And I hope that everyone listened to it. If you didn't, you know, please go back and listen to it after this. But the whole point of this is that you also said a few minutes ago that you maybe need a little bit more help to kind of get going. That's and right. I hear that from a lot of women. And my medical experts who I've interviewed on this show have said the same thing, that they hear that a lot from their patients, that the use and embracing sex toys or pleasure enhancers can really yes. help women to, as you said, to reach orgasm more easily, to get aroused more easily, and to just make the whole process just like so much more fun. Also, you're absolutely right. And I want to add one really important point. Sure. That sex toys, sex tools are great for self-pleasuring, but they're also great to incorporate in partner sex, whatever form that partner sex takes, whether it is intercourse or whether it is hands and mouths, that a great sex toy 
can help you get to the finish line or can help arouse you before you get to the finish line, whatever it is you need. And so if you have a partner, it's important to introduce that partner of whatever gender to the joys of pleasure tools Mm -hmm. so that this can be a threesome. Yeah, (laughs) I love that. (laughs) That's so great. Okay, let's get to your top picks now, Joan. So in the article, again, you all listening in or watching can check it out right after you listen to this. It'll be in the show notes, but you did list so some of your favorites because there were so many out there. And that's a, oh, another yeah. thing I just want to point out. I really do is that I really feel like for like the past two years, let's say, menopause has really started to have its moment in the sunlight, in the spotlight. There are a lot of celebrities, like very cool hip celebrities who are entering the menopausal years. And so now they're talking about it openly. They don't want to be like generations ago that it was kind of slid yeah. under the rug. And that's so great. It yes. is so great for women everywhere. And I think, this is my prediction, I think that sex, as you call it, senior sex, just kind of sex as a postmenopausal woman Af- and decades after that, this is going to be talked about a lot more. So you are like ahead of your time, Joan, in so many ways. 20 years. Yeah, 20, <laughs> for sure. Because people are still like, ooh, I don't want to talk about that. You know, like thinking about maybe your grandmother having sex or your mother having sex. Like, stop it, everyone. Sex is an important, yeah. whatever you want to call it, sex alone with someone, with more than one, whatever it is for you. And it doesn't have to be penetrative sex. It it takes all kinds of different forms. It can be such an important part of your life. And it can be fun once you get rid of the physiological issues that could be causing discomfort. Okay, let's get to these things. And your own stereotypes that are causing you to say, I guess sex is over because... I'm old now. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's undergoing changes. So inform yourself. Read the books. Talk to your girlfriends. Underst- talk to your girlfriends. Well, talk your girlfriends to a- may not know. You, they, right. Maybe you talk to them about what you're learning today, everyone. Share That's this episode right. with them. That's it. Talk to your Share healthcare your provider if you, if you have true issues that are causing painful sex. Of course, We say that over and over and over again. No woman should ever have to suffer in this day and age. Okay, let's get to the toys or pleasure enhancers themselves. Okay, throw out a few to us. And then again, people can look at the link as well. Tell us and and why did you choose them? Do you have a number one favorite or is that too tough? I actually do. Okay, what is it? (laughs) It's the oscillator with the soft finger attachment. Mm Mm-hmm the soft finger attachment that I call the marshmallow. And here's what I love about it. It is, mm, I couldn't have one on on the show here, but people can look at a picture. (laughs) It is plugged in, so it has a really strong power. But the part that touches the clitoris is soft, marshmallow soft. But within that, it is oscillating rather than just vibrating. It is oscillating, oscillating at a super fast rate of speed. And it is just so powerful. If you want direct stimulation to the clitoris that I think bar none <laughs> is the best clitoral stimulator, the oscillator is just Ero- amazing. Is that spelled E R? As an E R O S C I L L C A T O R. Got it. Got it. So, so it's like combination of eros and oscillate. Got it. So I just want to make sure that everyone, when they're you know reading the list, I'll have a link just to that also in the show notes to oh, make super. everyone's life easy. <laughs> and I and also then, want to say that go ahead. that all the vibrators that I recommend, I have also reviewed in depth on my blog. Right. And I have a blog post that is talking about the Cosmopolitan article and giving links to my reviews of those toys. So people go, well, why does she like it so much beyond these two sentences? Well, here, yeah. here's how you Joan, I have to really it. tell you, 
I have been following you for quite some time, actually. Ooh. And I think that, you know, you're right. Your blogs mm. really do go into detail about why you recommend something. And and you go beyond sex toys, of course. I mean, you know, there's yeah, a lot yeah. that you write about as it pertains to sex after 60, after 50, after 70, and so on. Yeah. And I really applaud you for that. And as Thank I said, you. I think you're a woman way ahead of your time, but you're in the right place at the right time, too. So everyone really do, uh, there will be a link to follow Joan to get to her website to get more information. And the fact that you really focus specifically on sex later in life really makes you even more special. All right, let's get on to another one. What's, what's your number two favorite? <laughs> sure. So I really love the womanizer toys that use air puff technology, right. as they've trademarked it, which it may seem like a weird, you know, how do I picture what an air puff is? But this surrounds the clitoris, but isn't vibrating directly on it. What it does instead as it is it sends puffs of air to it. Now, why does that feel good? Because it feels like oral sex. Okay. With a very skilled giver. It is really a whole genre of sex toys. And one of the things I had to do in this article was, well, I can't put in five section toys. Right. I have to maybe limit it to two because they're really all the rage right now anyway. Uh -huh. No, I guess I have three, three suction toys. And I nickname them suction toys because that's what the media calls them. But they don't really suck. That would be, it's a vacuum would be very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is a very, it's gentle, but it's strong at the same time. Hard to describe it. And in this article, I recommend the Womanizer Premium Eco which is made with recyclable parts. Can't put them in the recycle bin, but it has instructions. Uh, should you ever want to get rid of it? I don't know why you ever would. <laughs> it can be recycled. And I applaud them for that. Yep. And even the cord is recycled. It's really great. It's wonderful, but it's big and bulky. And so I also recommend one that is a smaller version. It's called the Melt. And it is smaller and lighter and could be easier to use if you want to use it during partner play because it doesn't take so much real estate on your genitals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there is the really pretty in your rose that is the same kind, but it's in the shape of a rose. It's like an artwork vibrator. <laughs> And it's just very pretty. How pretty. And, Sounds like a and great gift you, for Valentine's Day for well, yourself. Yes, it is. And it's also a pretty way to introduce sex toys to a partner. Mm -hmm. If you have a partner who's saying, yeah, well, I get how you want to use them for yourself. But while we're together, aren't I enough for you? It's not a matter of being, you know, come on. This is just going to enhance what we're sharing together. Joan, and I have the, to stop you right there and ask you, based on your research, talking to women, writing about this, talking about this for 20 years and counting. Is that more of an issue than we realize? Uh, yeah. It's so funny because my first impression would have been that the partner would say, wow, this is sexy. This is not- Well, they do once they experience this it. This is not making me lose my confidence as a sex exactly. partner. It's making me, it's turning me on. No, but the mindset before they've ever tried it okay. is this is mechanical. This is saying I'm my genitals and my well wishes are not enough <laughs> to get you there. Interesting. That's, oh, no, I'm going to crawl under a rock. You must not really love me or want me. It's because, I mean, if I can go back 50 years, it's the damage we've done to men as boys. By making them think their genitals is the center of the world for themselves and their partner, that's what sex is, is a raging erection. And that's not what sex is. That, I mean, if that happens, that's nice. That can be a part of it. But that doesn't define pleasure for your partner, guys. And it doesn't even define pleasure for you. This article was 
only on sex toys for women, but my blog reviews sex toys for men too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've seen that. And men need them now too, because Mm -hmm. men need more stimulation and men need a way to get past their performance anxiety. What if the erection doesn't happen? Can't satisfy my woman or I can't have an orgasm myself. And none of that is true. Absolutely. And, you know, we thank you for bringing that up. We didn't discuss that yet, but we mentioned the physiological challenges that women at this age can be having, but we didn't mention until now what men might be going through as well with certain medications we do know can cause them to have challenges as well. We don't know what their health issues or health status is. So these pleasure enhancers, sex toys can really not only help a woman, but also a man and they should be explored and how fun to explore together. And the good news too, is that maybe you haven't gotten to the point, everyone, where you're kind of comfortable going into a store, a brick and mortar store to take a look at everything. But there are so many options online that you can peruse and really starting with Jones Joan Price, right? JoanPrice.com. <laughs> and starting with her recommendations and yeah. uh, is, is a great place to start because she's tried them all, I'm assuming, Joan, right? Am I right? Or? Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course yeah, I've tried okay. them all. There, there you go. <laughs> of course I have. I would never recommend something I haven't tried. But we were talking about whether our partners are more evolved and would accept sex toys. And I was saying that it's the mindset. but Once they have experienced how they can share pleasure with a partner with the aid of a sex toy, then they're all in. They're all in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what? I I just thought of something that, uh, of course, you're familiar as almost everybody in the whole world is now with Esther Perel, who wrote that best-selling book, Mating in Captivity. I had the yeah. great pleasure of interviewing her for my first book, and this was back in 2010. And uh, you know, we've stayed in touch ever since. But she's so, so big now; <laughs> it's crazy. She yeah. really is so well known, and she's just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to yes. these kinds of discussions that uh, partners should be having about sex and many other points to a relationship. But anyway, one thing that are, that really many, many things that she told me has stuck with me over all these years. And one of them was that men, was specifically talking about men and women, everyone, but men, right now, right this minute, men love women, get turned on by women who love sex. Yeah. It's almost like, almost just an automatic thing. They think you want sex and want to have fun with sex, that's a turn on for them. So my guess is, that's why I was assuming that if a woman introduced sex toys into their sex life, that they would be like, yeah, I'm in. But I can see what you're saying. For this age group, it's a process, right? It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a man will tell me, well, not going to do it. We are not going to use sex toys. And I say, "Would oh, so you don't care about your partner's pleasure? Is that what you're telling me?" Uh, well, they that well, goes back to I what do. you were saying before about how their penis is kind of the you know the be all and end all of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you're right; it's, it's a generational thing. I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I have a question for you now about uh, another toy. And, you know, there might be some listeners who want to just kind of start with the basics. And in my mind, the basic is a good old fashioned vibrator, right? So (laughs) what do you think is the best? I think I already know the answer, of course. The best vibrator that people listening should definitely have in their drawer next to their bed? Well, the 
vibrator that everybody thinks of who came of age in the last 40, 50 years <laughs> is the magic wand. Uh -huh. It is old faithful. It is the king of wands. It has gone through many iterations. I love the magic wand rechargeable. Not only because it is rechargeable, you don't have to leave it plugged into the wall the way you used to, but also it has a silicone head rather than vinyl. It is softer. I mean, it's not soft. It's not soft like the little magic finger on the oscillator. Right. But this whole head that stimulates the entire vulva not just the, the nub of the clitoris that you see, which as of course you know, and maybe your listeners know, is only part of the structure of the clitoris. There's a whole lot of it going on. And the magic wand just sort of covers it all. And it can be mild on the magic wand is really medium high on anything else. And then it goes to turbo power. And for those of us who need a lot of stimulation, not our fault. It just happens that way. You got to have a magic wand. Got to have like, that's like the number one thing. Just get like, don't just get it. Don't even think twice. Just get it. <laughs> but there's also when you said for first timers, yeah, for people for first -timers. who are not everyone needs that kind of stimulation. And for people who are nervous about sex toys, they may feel overwhelmed by something as strong as the magic wand. And that's why I included the little Iroha toy that looks like a snowman and is soft all over. It is not particularly strong. So I got to say that if you need a lot of stimulation, it's going to be too mild. But if you're saying, I just want to have an experience with what happens with a sex toy that it doesn't carry me away in a frenzy of vibrations, mm -hmm. then this sweet little snowman, it's not called the snowman, but you'll recognize it because it looks like a snowman. And it's all made of cushioned silicone. And it's so soft that I sometimes just have to resist chewing on it because it looks so inviting. <laughs> It looks like that kind of <laughs> kind of soft candy. I, I don't even so, remember I'm sorry, the name. What is of it, it called? You call it the snowman, but what is it called? Oh, let me get the actual name of it oh, from is, this. But it's in, yeah, we have to know what the name of it is. But I know, I know. Yeah, that's a terrible that, thing everyone's to do. thinking, yeah, I want that. Like, what is it called? It's the Yuki. The Yuki, and the brand name is Aroha. The Aroha Yuki, made by Tango, which also makes a lot of sex toys for penises. Gotcha. Okay. But this is for, yeah. All right. Everyone, I think that you're getting a sense of kind of like three or four, I think you named just now, basics, each one different than the other. Yeah. And there are more, of course, on that list. There are only 10. Whereas if you go to Joan's website, you will see a lot more reviews in depth, which you, you know, you may really want to explore because we're all so different. Joan, as yes. you pointed out, you know, you may want a little bit of, you know, vibration or whatever you experience you're looking for. Someone may need a lot and you just yes. don't know. So you really need to explore. And that's part of the fun and bring your partner in if there is a partner. And let's also talk about that for a minute. There may not be a partner. There may not be a partner in your life at the moment that's for right. whatever the reason is. That's but right. don't think that you can't give yourself some pleasure because you can. And I'm not saying you should be, but I strongly urge you to consider it as a form of your own self-love. Uh, it's it's a good practice. Joan, what do you absolutely say about that? Absolutely true. Oh, oh, well, absolutely true. You can give yourself sexual pleasure. You have two hands. You have unlimited access to sex toys. Can't sign them out of the library, unfortunately, but <laughs> there are so many available to choose from. <laughs> and never give up on sexual pleasure because it feels good. It's good for you. Yeah. It helps you keep your genitals in shape. So there might be a partner making 
his or her or their way towards you. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be in the position of saying, oh, golly, I used to have sex, but I haven't touched myself in 30 years. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Nothing works anymore. Yeah. That doesn't have to happen. Keep yourself sexually vibrant by giving yourself regular sexual pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yep. You've written some great books, Joan, over the years. And one of them is called Sex After Grief. Yes. You just mentioned someone may not have a partner at this moment, and it could be, well, for whatever reason, there is a loss of a partner. You experienced the loss of a partner, and then you wrote this book. Talk to us about why you think how can you bring sex back into your life even when you're going through the grieving process? I really appreciate you bringing up Sex After Grief, Barbara, because that book is the closest to my heart Mm -hmm. of all the books I've written. Mm -hmm. When I lost my Robert to cancer seven years after our first kiss to the day, Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could ever recover. I had already written one senior sex book about him better than I ever expected. I was brainstorming for the second one that would become Naked at Our Age. I didn't know I would have a 20-year career. I thought this is just something I'm going to do. And then people ask me questions. Okay, I can do it again. I had no idea that this was going to be my life from now on. But even as a sex educator, as my daily job, a speaker, a writer, after Robert died, I didn't know how I would ever come back into my own body, my own sexuality. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I could possibly open to a new person. How do you do that when the person you want to make love to is dead? Robert died in 2008. It wasn't until 2019 that I felt I was ready to write Sex After Grief. Mm -hmm. And by that point, I had tried so many things. I had found my way to success in several different ways. An erotic massage, a friend with benefits, and finally actually meeting someone that I've been with for more than six years now. That's so wonderful, Joan. It can happen, but we're all on our own timeline. And one of the messages of this book, which includes many other griever stories, not just mine, because I'm only one person. Some people are ready right away because maybe they've been a caregiver for years with an a sick partner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they've been grieving already for years. Good point. And then their partner dies. And it isn't as if they say, oh, finally, no, never that. But they say, I've got to find some joy now. Mm -hmm. It's been years Mm -hmm. without it. Also, some people just have the kind of sexual energy that needs to be released that way. I have one person in the book who was looking for one night stand the evening after the funeral. Wow. As an outlet. Many of us take months or years. I took years. Yeah. And some people are somewhere in between. And some people say, it will say now, it's been some years, but I don't think I'll ever date again. Mm -hmm. Read the book anyway, please. It's a wonderful book, everyone. There will be... I mean, you know, there's a link to Joan's website and all the books are on there, but I think I'm going to have a link just to this because- Oh, thank you. It's such a good book, Joan. I mean, it's current. And I think this age group, there really are quite a few people listening in right now who have lost someone very dear to them, someone they loved, someone who they possibly had sex with. And- It's heartbreaking to me to think that any one of them may be giving up that part of their lives at this point because they lost someone. So it's a wonderful book and, and really thank you for writing it very much. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, and you are just so wonderful. I mean, you you came through that and you kind of just created a whole new next chapter for yourself with someone in your career in every possible way. I'm sure that you're very, very happy. You certainly seem to be to me and that you continue with your, you know, being a sexual being. And this is really so important. Thank you. I turned 80 a few months ago and people say, well, you don't look 80, you don't sound 80. And I said, well, this is 80. Yeah, this is 80. This is, this is yeah, 80. That's right. I feel 80. <laughs> <laughs> this is 80. This is 80 talking. But you're embracing 80. That's the key. Oh, well, yes. You're embracing. I've always said, you know, just be the best you can be embracing every part of your life, whatever age you are. That's what loving your age means, right? The only way not to get old is to die young. <laughs> <laughs> we're not given another alternative. No, no, we're not. No. And I think the message here today, just to kind of pinpoint what are we talking about, is that keeping sex in your life for the rest of your life yes. is really a good thing, is a wonderful thing, is a beautiful thing. Or bringing it back into your life if you've yes. given it up for whatever yes. your reason is. Yes. And we all have reason. Just like we all could come up with a reason why we don't exercise or don't do this or don't do that. There's always a reason, everyone. But don't let this escape your life. Bring it back or keep it in there. If you are doing it, keep it yes. going. And I really think you should follow Joan go onto her website, get the information that she has because she is one of us, right? She is a woman who one is over, us. she's over 50, she's over 60, okay? So far over 50. <laughs> <laughs> I remember 50 though, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm 67, I'm really happy about it. Yeah. You know, I feel good, everything's good, I'm good, I'm good. I had like different views on things even when I was in my 50s. It's so interesting to me how things kind of shift a bit with each passing decade. Don't you find that's true? Oh, I do so much. Especially when I was turning 80, I was thinking about what matters and what doesn't mm -hmm. at this time yeah, of my life. Priorities become so much more clear. They do. That starts during menopause, I think. Absolutely. When we're, we're going through so much that we say, take care of your own damn dentist appointment. You could do that stuff yourself, That's right. right? We don't clear people out of our lives unless, unless they're bad for us, but we clear obligations out of our lives because yes. we need to turn the focus on us. Yes. And then... As we go through the other end of that, we say, okay, I've got the postmenopausal zest now, I've got new energy. Do I want to turn it towards making my family's dental appointments? No. <laughs> I want to take up line dancing or salsa dancing. Yeah. I want to create a book club to talk about this novel I just read. Right. I want to join a hiking group. Yep. And I want to have more intimacy in my life too, because yes. that is part yes. of life, everyone. It really is. Exactly. This was such a great conversation, Joan. Oh, you Barbara, will be you back. made it great. Oh my gosh, you, you will be back because I love talking with you. But before I let you go, we covered a lot and I know we covered specific products, but again, it's all in the show notes. Everyone can go check it out on your website too. And in the excellent digital version of the Cosmo Sex App to 60, which I hope everyone reads. I loved it. I loved all the different kind of lenses that they brought to this issue. It was so well done. So well done. But Thank Joan, you. give us your three key takeaways you really want everyone to remember from this conversation today. I'll give you some takeaways that actually are things I didn't mention yet. Okay. Takeaways for sex, pleasurable, great sex going forward. One, redefine what great sex is. Don't get stuck on what it was in your 20s, 30s, even 40s. What feels good to your body now? What brings you pleasure? What arouses you? What gets you to orgasm? 
learn to have the conversations about sex so that if you're with a partner, you know how to advocate for what you need, what you want in a way that does not diminish the partner, but brings the partner along for the ride. And number three, learn as much as you can about how things change as you age sexually. Part of that is reading the books. Part of that is trying new sex toys. Keep an open mind. Oh, no, I've gone to four. I better stop talking. Oh, <laughs> oh let no. me give number five. Yeah, please keep going. Keep a sense of humor, because if you can't laugh about sex at our age, what can you laugh about? <laughs> I love it. Jim, those were so great. Those were so great. And I hope, I, I don't know if you all heard, but I did. My dog kind of <laughs> asleep on the bed as he always is when I'm recording an episode, kind of like having a, some kind of a dream over there, whimpering in the sleep. But anyway. <laughs> the dog was listening to the five tips. He, I, I, yeah, want exactly. to I want, I want. <laughs> Oh my gosh. He's a senior, right? He's a senior dog. We'll it was see. perfect. We'll see. Oh, Joan, thank you so much. I really so appreciate you. And I'm so happy that you came on and that we were able to have this conversation. Well, thank you for letting me talk to your wonderful audience and with such a great interviewer. Thank you, Barbara. Thank it was you. such a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Age Better Podcast, please do a few things. First, share it with all your friends and family. Then, subscribe to Age Better wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Finally, if you have ideas for topics you want me to cover in a future episode of Age Better, send an email to agebetterpodcast at gmail.com or reach out to me on social media. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice. Women's Voices Amplified.